Um, in 2010, Wilco became your team manager. And in that year, you uh, won your first um, MotoGP title. And what was Wilco's influence on that performance? Uh, yeah, we decided to, to change uh, our team manager. So we take uh, Wilco. Uh, since the first time I, I met him, I saw him a uh, uh, very logical person uh, speaking. Uh, and also, you know, you, every, everyone knows that he was an ex-rider. So for, for sure, this uh, give him a lot of experience to trust me to me. Uh, in some occasions that I feel some, some doubts or something. And also the difference between uh, an ex-rider and uh, Wilco, uh, a normal ex-rider and Wilco, is that Wilco knows very well how to explain the things. He's a natural speaker, so he understands how to speak, how to explain me the best way, the things that he sees on the track. Okay. How do you feel about that, Wilco? Yeah, I think... Um we get along uh, quite easily and, and quite fast because also uh, you know we had this mutual feeling that uh, how to ride a bike and uh, I think you know to start off a season like 2010 it's very difficult to to uh, to feel different because uh, it was actually uh, maybe his easiest world title as so far because uh, he win nine races and uh, we had a big lead and uh, everything went very smooth so uh, it was a very, very good start off and of course also for me uh, a nice moment to, to enter his story because uh, he already had a, a big story and of course he was already very talented but uh, you know after two years uh, on that MotoGP bike uh, it was time to become world champion and uh, he did that uh, great. You are a Spanish guy with a real Spanish temper and Wilco is a, is a cool Dutchman. I, he's very down no, to earth. It's not so cool. No? It is also <laughs> a little bit uh, warm sometimes. Well, tell yeah, me about it that. It depends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't think so? No. I, normally the Germans or the Dutch are quite cold and quite serious, but Wilco is very funny and he smiles a lot. He makes some, a lot of jokes, so I don't see him <laughs> like a normal, normal Dutch. Okay. Well, um, that's also a question I want to ask because we, we know Wilco and we know he's a man with a lot of humor. So, uh, yeah. is it also fun working with him? Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, the, the thing that I like most from Wilco is that he's always very happy and this happiness uh, he transmits very well to all the team. And all the team can be a little bit more happy when, he see, when we see, see his face. So. <laughs> Also, uh, we make a lot of jokes, and when, when we get a win, uh, we are joking every time, all the time. No? So, this for sure is very positive for, for the ambience on the, on the team. Sounds good. Yeah. And um, your father, he, um, he educates young uh, bike riders in, um, at Mallorca. And can you tell me something more about that? Yeah, my dad was the one who... Uh, uh, enter me in this world because uh, he was an ex rider but uh, just amateur, was not professional. So uh, when I was three years old, uh, in this period he was a mechanic. So in his free, free time he uh, uh, bought me a motorbike with his handmade motorbike, very little. So I started with three years old. Okay. And then he uh, uh, started training me in his uh, work because he, he works in uh, Aqualand. He has a go-kart renting, so I train with the cars and with the motor, with the mini bikes. So I started to grow up as a as a little kid and also as a as a rider. Okay. How important were were his lessons on your career? Uh, you know, for for me, my dad is uh, is a very good teacher, as a motorcycle teacher. Um, probably is the the only one in the world that have a method for teach the little kids to, to grow up as a rider. No? Uh, nobody, nobody else knows for me that uh, have this, this method and because the motorcycle world is not the same as soccer or tennis, that the young kids are playing and practicing exercises every day. In motorcycle world, everyone uh, practice without any method. I, I, I've been very lucky to have my, my dad as a, as a teacher. Okay. Um, Wilco, a question for you. Um, you organized the Speed Week in Spain for 17 years already. 
And um, can you tell me more about that week? Yeah, as, as Jorge said, it's, it's very important to, um, to educate uh, riders and in, in any kind of level. And of course, uh, I also have been uh, quite lucky because my dad was also uh, very uh, uh, enthusiastic about motorbikes. So also from four year old, I was one year older than Jorge. I was on a motorbike. Okay, my dad ha didn't have the skills to teach me, but he made sure I had a bike under my ass and could ride bikes <laughs> from fourth till 16 I did motocross so I know how important it is to ride bikes but also I know how important it is to have somebody around you who's positive and that can teach you what to do and what not to do because uh, as we all know you can hurt yourself quite hard with uh, with those bikes and uh, at a certain point in my career I thought okay what do I want to do if I stop racing and I thought, well, I'm good in riding bikes, so I, you know, one of the things was I want to teach others how to, you know, jump up their level and uh, teach them how to ride bike. Until now, the Speed Week has not delivered world champions, but it did deliver multiple Dutch champions. At this moment, one of your students is performing very well in the World Championship Supersport. And what can you say about the influence of the Speed Week on his performance? Well, I, I don't totally agree with you because in my eyes the Speed Week did give us three world champions and actually two and in, uh, in 2009 Carl Critchlow became world champion in Supersport and I have two titles uh, with Jorge. So also the Speed Week in those years that even they didn't, you know, uh, went to my school those years. Okay. But I believe that in the years I was teaching others that I learned the way how to anticipate and tell them what I see and what I uh, um, yeah what I see on the track so to get them better and to uh, avoid crashing or to to give them some tips on lines or making different choices on gears so I think uh, the speed week did help that and okay no not finally on uh, I have to follow him around the racetrack to say hey left right or whatever but uh, because I, I'm not able to do but uh, on the other side I, I learned a lot doing those things okay um, how many more MotoGP seasons are you going to race ah, it's a difficult question for the moment I I normally I I want to live uh, day by day or week by week in professional side uh, year by year or maximum two years far no if the injuries uh, are not so much and I, I am good uh, physically and mentally, I keep uh, being strong and with motivation to work very hard, I would like to, to spend uh, four, five or six seasons more. But I, I cannot uh, say to you, I'm sure I'm going to stay so many seasons. Okay, but have you some plans after that? Maybe starting a race school with Wilco yeah, or something it, it like would, that? Yeah, it would be very nice. Yeah. To, uh, to practice some, some year with him as a teacher, because I will not have the same experience as him. Uh, it would be nice, uh, but you know, I, I don't know what can the, can the future bring you. Uh, bring me, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, so if I go to Almer Almeria in November, uh, is it possible that you can give me some instructions on the motorbike? Yeah, for sure. Yeah? <laughs> 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 for sure, for sure. For sure. Um, okay, well. I can I can make you a lap in the in the back of my bike, firstly, and then uh, you can try yourself. Okay. Uh, well. You in the front and me with another bike uh, on the rear, looking at you. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> very nice views. Very nice views. Okay, we have an okay. appointment. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> we will. We will do.